about letting Elon Musk loose inside your mind. Well, our next guest did exactly that, volunteering for the first ever Neuralink brain chip. When I first actually moved the cursor with my mind, it blew my mind for like a whole day. And to be helping, to be able to be useful in some way, it completely changed how I live. Paralysed from the neck down after a diving accident eight years ago, 30-year-old Noland Arbor is the first person to be implanted with Neuralink's brain chip. It was like uh, using the force. The technology promising to allow him and others with paralysis to control technology with their minds. The device is designed to interpret your neural activity so you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking about moving. In less than two hours, 64 threads, thinner than a human hair, containing over 1,000 electrodes, are attached to a patient's brain, transforming a person's thoughts into actions. Noland now able to operate an iPad, play chess, even dominate at Mario Kart. Arbor is the first participant in a six-year trial to test the safety of Neuralink's device, Musk spruiking the upsides of his latest invention. Imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer. That is the goal. For now, though, Noland is just happy with his latest upgrade. I am basically like all of y'all, um, just with a bit of hardware in my skull, a bit more compute power, and that's about it. <laughs> Nolan joins us now. Nolan, this has been tested on pigs and monkeys, but you are the first person, the first human to have this procedure. What made you want to be the first guinea pig? Yeah, that's a good... Joins us now. Nolan, this has been tested on pigs and monkeys, but you are the first person, the first human to have this procedure. What made you want to be the first guinea pig? Yeah, that's a great question. I think... Uh, I just wanted to do my part and help um, move this technology forward. Um, there's a lot of promise in this. There's a lot of good that it can do for the world. And I just felt like... And this is how they're going to sell it to you people. See what she called them, a guinea pig. But I want to say Shalom. First thing and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory and honor as due to Yahweh by Hashem, Shai by Hashem, Rekakadash. I like to give double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone that rule well and blessings and salutations to the whole elect. Know as in this gospel, broad lift up the standard of Yahweh by Shimi Shai, wherever they may be. Hey, this is just a quick lesson through the spirit, Lord, it's whether it be edifying, going into the MOT to the busy, okay, which we affectionately call the mark of the beast, the RFID chip. And right here is a sales pitch. They're selling it to you people. Um, you heard what she said. She said, how does it? She said, how does it uh, feel to be the first guinea pig? And, you know, they perform all types of lab experiments on guinea pigs. You know, they shoot them up with injections and, you know, they test them and give them certain uh, proteins and, and poisons to see how they react to it. And if it kills them off at an accelerated rate. And let's show you how this man is the devil because he tests his own animals that have a damn near 90% mortality rate. And then all of a sudden he wants to test it in humans. Like animal DNA and human DNA is two different types of DNA. And it's never supposed to mix because we're two different types of flesh, okay? So with that being said, um, this guy allegedly, according to the uh, according to the uh, report, he was paralyzed from the neck down from a particular accident. Oh shit! Hold on. He was paralyzed from the neck down from like a diving accident. Which these Edomites, they you know, they do crazy shit like that. They'll go skydiving without a parachute and land flat on their face and then wonder why they bust it up in a thousand different pieces. Then again, that's even if this guy is really even messed up. Okay, because what we're realizing now is that they're gonna sell this technology on a national on a massive scale because for the simple fact this is biblical prophecy. Okay? These are part of those miracles which this devil is performing. Because um, if you ever saw that movie by the name of Upgrade, and that's the spirit, they actually just put it back on Netflix. It's called Upgrade. And it didn't get too much uh, publicity when it came out, though it received an 85% rating on Megacritic because the movie was that. The movie was a dope, that was a dope movie. Okay, I, I uh, recommend you brothers to watch that movie Upgrade. And also they have another movie called Implanted, which is around the same Ginses. But instead in Upgrade, he's more like a super soldier due to these uh, cybernetic abilities he have due to stem being put in his spinal, okay, which is part of those miracles. Now, when you look at the comments, it says, 
everybody's, you know, he's basically, they're, they're committing him, you know, because you got a lot of people that suffer from brain aneurysms. You got a lot of people in America that's sick, that's paralyzed, you know, got what do you call a uh, fibrosis, whatever it is, when, you, when your bones and shit locked up, lock up on you, you know, a lot of people are in wheelchairs, a lot of people are paraplegic. You got a lot of Stephen Hawkins out here, you know, and this technology is pretty much the the credit de la creme to getting your life back, or at least so they say. So reading the comments, it says this is the most groundbreaking technology advance of 2000 so far. Truly amazing, which shows that this guy right here, he will get it. Because what they don't understand is when you get this thing put inside you, that's a that's it. OK, that's an automatic death sentence from your how about you, how shy. But the difference is Esau. He can get to see it because, I mean, he's going to be destroyed anyway. You know, no matter what he does, he can refuse it. He can get it. At the end of the day, the spirit of the Lord is not dealing with them. You see, but the, the, the offense is on you Israelites because all this information is coming out. All this technology is coming out on what this thing is. And yet you got Israelites out there that's that's playing games with this prophecy. You know, like I'm guarantee you when we look into the comments. I guarantee you somebody's going to make mention of this being the chip or the MOTB. But yet you got Israelites out there that's saying, oh, this is an embargo. It's Christianity. And what's so crazy about it is because Apostle Tahar made an excellent point going into this guy, Nate, basically stating that, OK, let's just say that if you do tell people at the last minute that it is the micro C hip and that this is what it is. What about your women and your kids? You know, see, he, and he said it. he says, see, you think your woman believes the women in the IUIC don't believe. And half them guys in the IUIC, they don't believe. You know, but let's just say push comes to shove when Nate finally gets off his high horse and admit to the fact that he's been wrong all this time. Um, and admitted that this is a micro C hip. People in his congregation gonna take it because a lot of them women, they got children with these men, you know, and they don't know what it's like to suffer. Okay, same thing when the Icky Vicky came out back in 2021, 2020. Hey, a lot of them dudes in that congregation took that you know what because they leaders did not tell them not to. They didn't prepare. They didn't prepare their congregation to oppose this common tyrannical government. So it's safe to say that these men are not built up in a spirit to deal with the adversity that's coming because this thing is going to be instituted by bloodshed. Okay, and more on them, uh, I want to say more on the likes of 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 the one that goes in your hand. Okay, the one that goes in your head. I don't really see too many people. On a national scale, getting that, but then again, hey, if they want to turn you into some type of hit agent, hey, they can put that shit in your head and say, well, look, you an agent of the New World Order now. We need your services. Go ahead and put this. They gonna total recall your ass, <laughs> all right? But it says, uh, point of correction: the idea has been there for decades, but Musk brought it into reality because this was all a dream. Well, for one thing, Musk basically just adopted the patent to it, but they've been talking about this for years. I remember back in 2015, you had the University of Kansas experiment with this technology. All right. It says, mate, this is far advanced than it has been. So do some research before making a blanket statement. OK. But uh, it says the connection part of the technology was around for decades. There are solutions that deliver the same connection stability without the invasive implanting. What is groundbreaking is the software that interprets the signals and translates to action with such low latency. OK, so people are opting into this. You know, look at this. Wonderful just to just to start up what this can do sooner than later, they're going to be putting it in their hands and their foreheads. And, and since people are receiving this technology so well, eventually they will use it for your bank account information, for your hospital records. They will use it for your uh, for your homes, for your vehicles in order for you to tag your vehicle up and get the updated insurance on it. You got to have this. You got to have this tag. Okay, they may somehow, some way, install a module inside your car saying that, look, your car can't go unless you put this tag in it. So they're getting ready to make this mandatory. Uh, hence the economic collapse, man. Okay. So anyway, let's go to the book of Isaiah 56. And I'm going to start at verses uh, uh, 10. Because, you know, you other Israelites out there, I don't know what the hell your problem is. But the men of the Great Millstone have been pushing this prophecy since day one. And I don't understand what the hell is wrong with these other guys, man. Why they seem so hard to, why they so hard hell-bent on not pushing this technology, man. It just, it's prophecy. 
But that shows me that these men, they're not an urgent matter to get up out of here. And it says here, Isaiah 56 and 10, it says, His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yeah, because they understand if they tell the people the truth, they can't push them bullshit gimmicks that they've been pushing. Because we know Jake, Jake likes to be entertained constantly. You know, Jake don't take shit serious. So the minute that these other groups start to, to teach more in a sincerity like we've been teaching without the gimmicks and the accolades, that's when a lot of them ninjas in their congregation going to leave and say, you know what, I didn't sign up for this. This is boring. Only thing y'all do is teach out of the scriptures. What about the barbecues? What about the, uh, the outings? What about the marching? What about the rap videos? But if you come in that spirit, then that means because, nigga, you're in the wrong spirit. And it says his watchmen are blind. They're all ignorant. They're all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleepy, lying down, loving to slumber. And it reads, it says, yeah, they are all greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. And they all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. OK, and that's you Jake's in these other camps, you leaders, because you got camps out there that know about this prophecy and that teach it, but they don't push it. OK, prime example, uh, Alizar, they know that this is the chip, but they don't really push it. You know, Nate, Nate knows, but he's not going to push it because he's sold out. OK, one last precept. This is the book of Revelation 13. And I'm going to start at verses 12. It says, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly one was healed. And he doeth great wonder so that he make a fire coming down from heaven, uh, from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and calls that as many as were not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, and we understand that next verse goes into that MOTB. All right. So anyway, I'm gonna end it here, giving all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh by Shimi Yahweh Shai. Lord, will you edify until the next lesson? Shalom. If anyone should take that step and take that plunge, then it should be me, and I will take any of the headache and heartache out of it for anyone coming after me. Anything that'll go wrong would go wrong with me and uh, I pray that that doesn't happen and it really hasn't so far but yeah it's been it's been great I thought that um, you know why not me with any surgery there are risks did they warn you that something might go wrong or could go mm. wrong during the surgery yeah absolutely um, there was a laundry list of um, risks involved with this with the implant with the surgery I had to read through them all. I talked with my parents about them. As a quadriplegic, my brain is one of the few things that I have left. And so that was a bit daunting, but you know, I, again, I just was at complete peace with the whole thing. And uh, I knew that, you know, somewhere deep down, I just knew that everything was going to work out. And here I am. Nolan, you spoke to your parents. How did they feel and the rest of your family feel about you going through this? Yeah, like I said, I talked with them every step of the way. I told them uh, right up front that if at any point in time they weren't comfortable with me doing the surgery, that they could tell me and 